Brother Jared and Sister Kim Blake. And uh, had them back in church. Good to have uh, Chase and Marissa here. Yeah. And good to have Taisha back. Yeah. And yeah. it's not Francisco, but. Yeah. 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 Okay. And Brother, good to have, good to have Brother uh, uh, Ivan too. Amen. All right. Let's just invite the presence of the Lord. Father, we love you today. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. We ask you, God, today to just overshadow, Lord, our services today, the delivery of the Holy Ghost, right there now. I ask you, God, to be with those, Lord, that have suffered loss, Lord, this week. Those that, God, have met with bad weather conditions, Lord, and lost loved ones, Lord. Please minister and intervene and pray today, Lord. Oh, God, I thank you for the liberty of your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Lord, your will. I praise you, Lord. I praise you today, Lord. Right. Hallelujah.
Yes, Lord. Praise God. Why would you go to Haiti? 
Why would you stay during the violence? Why would you why would you do that? Why would you sacrifice your life needlessly? And it was just it was it it broke everybody's heart that was that was Christian that knew why they were doing it. Yeah. They committed their lives. They yeah. they weren't there because they just taking a vacation. That's right. They were committing their life. They were sacrificing themselves. Yeah. Even when it was hard and difficult. And just just like when they're being gathered in, it's yes. going to be amazing, yes. amazing. Amen. Yes. 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 It's a challenge. A challenge to myself. I, I love the Lord and I thank you for being here. Amen. 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 I very briefly knew him. I talked to his dad and visited with his dad. Uh, convocation of the Lord last night, yes. And, uh, uh, but I tell you what, church, it's going to happen one day. We're going to be gathered together. For God's people. Amen. Amen. Glad day, wonderful day. Amen. 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 Oh, we're going to come to you at this time this morning for the Sunday morning times and offerings. Thank you for being faithful in your giving to the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you. And we so the a living God who loves us beyond all confidence. And when you don't want to, so you died and gave his blood for us. And we thank you, Lord, that you have taught us and left the example of what real love is. We ask you to bless us today, Father, and give us It's a blessed gift today, Father, for us today. We pray this and give thanks to all the people. Amen. Amen.
worship the Lord today. Amen. 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 Amen.
they didn't take care of her. They just let her lay there oh. and bleed out, and she passed away. And then um, oh, wow. a few days later, we heard about this guy who was on a motorcycle, and he was chased down and assassinated. And uh, it was just because he owed drugs to somebody. And I mean, stuff like that happens, but as Americans here in America, we don't. It's not very common for that to happen. And there's just it was just a bunch of different things that were it was just insane like the things that you heard the stories that you heard the things that you saw the people that i mean they're homeless they didn't have shoes some of them didn't even have clothes on their back and they were just eating out of the trash because they had no money to pay for food oh. and i just had to thank god and Amen. for being american yeah. and having the money and food on my table clothes yeah. on my back yeah and staying yeah um AC, there's no yeah. air conditioning down there. I'm not kidding when I say I lost five pounds from sweating because it was so hot. But I'm just, I'm thankful I had the opportunity. It was very eye opening and um, yes. God really blessed me. Touch those that are in room and traveling, God. 
Minister, we pray, Lord. We praise you and we thank you, God, for everything you do. In Jesus' precious, precious name. Hallelujah. And everybody said amen. 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 You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you about the three-part nature of man. Uh, the, the spirit, the soul, and the body. Amen. And, uh, you know, our goal as Christians and as people in ministry, our goal is to accomplish the will of the Lord and to help the body of Christ. Amen. To be better equipped to serve the Lord faithfully every day of our lives. You know, we don't just come to the church and feel the love and the, the glory and the anointing of God. I want you to know it's been it's been probably one or two out of the last 10 or 15 times that I felt the Lord as much here as I felt the Lord in my study, studying to prepare for here. I'm telling you, as we have our daily devotions and our walk with God, I'm telling you, God will visit you yes. if you will draw near to Him. Yes. If you will strive to enter in, He's a faithful and loving God that's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Right. And He wants to minister to you. People are hungry. Amen. While we were there uh, at, at Bradley's graduation, there was a pastor that asked me, could I preach him a revival? And I mean, what I'm saying is people are hungry. Yeah. Pastors are hungry for help. Yeah. What is the help? My help comes from the Lord. Yeah. Amen. The help is the praying body of Christ. The help yeah. is the anointing of God. Amen. That makes a difference in our life. We, it's better to understand why God made us the way he did and to have fellowship with the Lord with our hands extended. Amen. To be the salt and the light to those that are in need. When I can't, uh, I, I was someplace and, and uh, while we were there, uh, I was talking to a lady and, oh, I know I was at Costco and I was talking to a, actually I was talking to her teenage son and just ministering to him and his little brother about 11, 10, 11, 12 years old and uh, talking to him about the Lord being ready when the trumpet sounds. Are, are they walking with God? Do they have a relationship and an experience with God? And the teenager grinned and said, yes, sir. You know, but I mean, I think he was kind of shocked that I was actually asking him about it. But I'm telling you, after I was just about ready to go, his mother came up and she began to talk. And I'm telling you, she had all kinds of questions. And she was more interested in hearing possibly what I was trying to say, maybe, than what he was. He may have been a little bit embarrassed, you know, people coming and going. But I'm telling you, if we'll get hungry, God will fill us. If we'll feel after the Lord, God will touch us. If we'll seek, we'll find. If we'll ask, it to be given. Amen. If we were there willing to open the door and let the Lord come in, he will come in and sup with us. Amen. We're living in a land, as Marissa told, about uh, really don't have need of a whole lot. Uh, but Zechariah 12 and 1 says, The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. God breathed into you and I. Amen. God breathed into Adam and he became a living being. Amen. Glory to God. As we allow the Lord to form us in our lives, to speak to us, to work in our hearts and lives, to deal with us. I'm telling you, it's not always going to be you're doing a good job and everything's okay. Sometimes there's some things that God is wanting to change and God is wanting to teach you and I. How to be better servants for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. We learned last time when the Word of God is speaking to us, the target is always the spirit. Not our natural man, but the spiritual man. That's what God is wanting uh, to minister to. And, and in this uh, life in the spirit, uh, the full life study Bible, whichever one this is, amen, they're the same. They just changed their name. It says, it says the giving of life to human beings is described as the result of a special act of God in distinction from the creation of all other living things. God specifically imparted life and breath to the first man, indicating that human life stands higher and in a different category from all other forms of life and that there is a unique relationship of divine life and human life. God is always going to be supreme. He's God. 
when you ask the Lord to show us what we have need of. Amen. Our need is not always material. Our need is not always financial. Our need is not always just physical. Brother, I'm telling you, our greatest need today is spiritual. That we might draw near to God with a whole heart, with all of our heart, with all that is within us. God gives us a will to serve Him. Amen? He doesn't twist our arm and make us submit and surrender. The KJV Bible tells us, amen, the infallible Word of God. It tells us that Jesus is coming back in an hour that we think not. Right. Hey, but in order to be ready, we need to be sick in God with all that is within us. We need to realize that perilous times are coming. It is not His will. It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The way we allow God's Spirit to deal with us, amen, and to lead our spirit, it'll determine the choices that we make in life. I ran up on, I Googled a diagram, amen, the, the parts of the, uh, of the body, amen, and uh, uh, the spirit there, and it said the soul and the spirit and the body, and it broke it down and everything. And I'll be sharing a little bit of that in a moment here, but I want you to know, if you look at the Word of God, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, completely, perfectly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to beware of the godlessness of these last days that we live in. I'm telling you, it's perilous. It's perilous times, not just in Haiti, not just in Vanuatu, not just in uh, uh, Raton, amen, not just in Port-au-Prince or wherever. Brother, I'm talking about we're living in perilous times. Why? Because men can go to the church of the living God in America today and sit there and not realize that they're dead spiritually and not realize that there's something God is willing to do, amen, spiritually in their heart and life. And what's happening? There's not enough power in the pulpit. There's not enough power in the pews. There's not enough power in the altars to make a difference. But I'm telling you, it's there for us if we will allow God to change it. Amen. 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 God is faithful. Yes. Amen. Amen. This know also that in the last days, perilous times yes. shall come. Perilous. That word perilous means through the idea of reducing strength. Amen. Difficult, dangerous, furious times, fierce, perilous times. Brother, it seems like we're living in a day and hour when, when God's people, it seems like when one falls by the wayside. And I'm not talking about giving up on God. I'm not talking about backsliding or going away from God. I'm talking about going home to their glory. I remember Brother Persinger, my dad, used to always say, it seems like whenever somebody leaves the church or goes away, God immediately, amen, within a week or two, God fills that gap. And God makes a difference. And within a, a week or two, a Sunday or two, he may have said, you can't even notice that so-and-so had gone. The time that, that uh, some uh, machine company over here uh, shut down and, and he lost like four, five, six families. Amen. Some of you may have been here just in just a few week period. People had to know where the work was. And I'm talking about, he said, son, we were pastoring in Montrose. A few weeks later, I talked to him and he said, son, you can't even hardly tell the difference now. We love these and people that left. We, we miss them. We want God to use them and accomplish his will in their heart and life. But I'm telling you, God is not in a bind. Yes, amen. Perilous times. Amen. We need to be aware to know this no. Be absolutely assured of and aware of. Recognize and affirm in your spirit. Not just in your mind. You can change your mind at a will. Amen. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. What does that mean? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, 
truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent. In other words, they're not in control. They're inconsistent in their life and in their walk with God. Fierce despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. What are you saying? I'm trying to tell you today, amen, that it seems like the church is just looking for anybody to blame except themselves. But you and I need to suck it up, brother. You and I need to realize we can be where we used to be in God. And God intended for us to be stronger, for us to be, amen, larger in the faith, greater in the faith, amen, wanting to do more for God than we've ever desired to do before. But, brother, nobody's going to twist our arm. we got to realize that's going to happen. There's going to be some sacrifice. God's Spirit, amen, we covered two or three weeks ago, deals with us. Amen. God's Spirit communicates with us through the Holy Ghost. Amen. Through our spirit that we may know the truth and the will of God for our lives according to the Bible. The Bible, the Word of God. The Bible. Amen. What is it? Forty different authors over a period of sixteen, uh, uh, one hundred and six or sixteen hundred years, I believe it was, over several different continents, brother. I'm telling you, there was a work that was done that few, if any, in here even really realize and recognize the anointing of God that made a difference. For the words came not in old time, but the will of, by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. How was the Holy Ghost? Sister Jordan, you're not that bad. Sister Jordan. 
Lord, you're not that bad. You're not bad. You're like Christ pretty close. You know what? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. When we get really closer to the Lord, how do we feel? Woe is me. Woe is me. I have to encourage myself. Amen. The past week, not this week, but last week when I was going to that graduation, I had to prepare myself and encourage myself. And I really believe the Holy Ghost brought it to me because I felt like such a failure, not because of some great sin in the moment, but I just felt so aloof from God. I mean, just all this coming and going and hustle and bustle and everybody ready for everything except the coming of the Lord. I mean, they're ready for the graduation. They're ready for the party. They're ready for the meal before or after. But who's giving thought that the Lord loves them and said, Amen, His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me? Literally, I woke up and I just felt dirty. Dirty. And I said, Oh God, forgive me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Just because I'm not having to preach tomorrow, day after tomorrow, whenever I don't remember when it was, but just because I'm not in the saddle, so to speak, don't let me forget to have my walk with you, brethren. Have it alive, have it pertinent, have it real for just now. Because that's when the trumpet could sound right then, right now. Amen. When the trumpet sounds. I want body, soul, and spirit to be ready, amen, to caught up together with the Lord. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. God's spirit deals with us. He communicates with us. And he communicates with our spirit. I shared with you, I'm almost positive I shared with you about how that uh, when the word of God and the spirit of God reaches out to us, he reaches out first and foremost to our spirit. Uh, I can't remember which one of them it was that said that the, the natural mind will forget. I mean, the emotions, uh, they're up and down and here and there and everywhere. and They change from day to day. I mean, brother, our, our feelings. I mean, we won't, we won't uh, you know, Sister Angela's family to walk perfect. Amen. We want everything to be right. Amen. But the preacher, amen, his family comes in and we want them to just be able to just sit and take it easy and just enjoy the service and don't put no pressure on because they've been raised in ministry. Don't put no pressure on because they've been there. Baloney. Let me tell you something, brother. We better be concerned about what thus saith the Lord and what the Spirit of God is requiring of them. And he's going to come back and he's going to come back for a people that are watching and that are waiting for him. Amen. Your soul is what I'm supposed to be talking about today. Amen. Your soul, your mind, will, and your emotions. Your soul. Amen. Whenever Adam and Eve when were there in the garden and, and you know, uh, Eve began to listen to the serpent and he convinced her that God was withholding something good from her. And she began to partake of the fruit there. And she gave to Adam. And Adam went right along with her. Instead of being a leader, us men, if we're not careful, we'll go right along with. And brother, our wives are far more uh, sentimental than we are. They're far more loving, far more tender. Amen. They're far more congenial. They're far more this and far more that. But brother, I'm telling you, we better be being concerned about what God is wanting from us. The soul is where you make your choices. Yes, sir. Remember I talked to you about your thoughts is going to determine the variety of choices that's available to you. Amen. The spirit is where we get our intuitiveness. Brother Cantor said there's a gift of discernment. He said, but many times most of us follow. Amen. Another gift, and it's the gift of suspicion. Amen. Assumption. Assumption, whatever it is. I wrote down uh, suspicion. I don't know. I don't remember. I could have made it wrong. But anyway, uh, it's in the right color. It's in the, it's in the right color. Amen. Y'all are supposed to be able to see all that and figure it out. Yes. Amen. But anyway, the soul's work through the body. 
And the, the soul doesn't grasp things incomprehensibly, but only what our reason can figure out and make sense of. That's what the soul wants to follow, what it can figure out. The soul, amen, wants to be in a place of comfort. The soul wants to take care of ourselves before anybody else. But I'm telling you, the, the, the spirit is the highest, the deepest, and the noblest part of man. But the spirit of man is fitted to comprehend eternal things. Spurgeon, I believe, said that, but it may not have been him. It may have been uh, uh, somebody else. If the spirit dwells faithfully with God, amen, faithful be high in God. But if the spirit dwells inconsistently, then faith will be weak in God. Right. Amen. What are our appetites and our desires according to the will of the Lord? What are our appetites and our desires according to our body, soul, and spirit? Amen. What are they? I'm telling you, we need to bring them in sync to what God wants them to be today. Yeah. You need to realize God is wanting to do great things in and through oh, your life, right. in your walk. Just because our kids are raised, just because, amen, we're coming to the uh, golden years, just because we've accomplished this or that or whatever, brother, I'm telling you, we've not reached retirement in God. Right. Amen. There's still people, amen, that need somebody to love them, to reach out to them, to yeah. yield to the Spirit of God and let God touch them through <coughs> us. Amen. The soul... Amen wants to be servant to the spirit that is in us. If we wonder why we make the choices and the decisions that we make, it's because of where our spiritual man is. Where is our spirit? What are we meditating upon? How are we figuring things out? Are we figuring things out by our natural man? Amen. Are we, are we uh, supposing this to be the will of God or are we discerning the will of God? We need to be being led by the Spirit of God. Brother, yeah. I'm telling you, I've never felt so inadequate for ministry, seems like, in my life. What's going on, Brother Nick? I don't know. What do you do? Give up? No, you don't give up. You keep crying aloud to God. You keep striving to be faithful. You keep trusting that tomorrow, amen, this afternoon, amen, this late morning, God's going to do a Holy Ghost breakthrough and the breath of God. God's word is still true and sure. Amen. He can still do it. And he's still looking to do it. Remember the man that came to the Lord? I believe he was a man of the Sanhedrin. I believe he was a priest and a big man, somebody of importance. And he come to him and he said, my, my daughter dies. My daughter's at the point of death. I believe it was his daughter. And uh, she was at the point of death. And uh, his intellect wouldn't concern about whether he was doing something exactly right or wrong. He was concerned about getting his daughter's need met. Right. Right. And I'm telling you, if we'll get so in earnest about getting our need met with God, amen, whenever Adam was guilty with sin, he was blinded. He realized he was wrong. He felt the guilt. He went and he hid himself from God. Amen. He, they sewed fig leaves together and made them garments to cover their nakedness up. And everywhere he turned, everything that he seemed like he spoke, it exposed the need in his life. And that's where we are. Amen. But yet, whenever Abraham and Isaac went to the top of the mount there, it was Isaac was the one that said, Father, amen, the, the, the fire and, and the wood, and, and we're going to the altar. Where's the sacrifice? And he said, my son, God will provide. God will provide. Amen. One preacher said that whenever Cain and Abel was there, and Abel, or Cain, went to all the trouble, amen, to prepare and do and make his sacrifice just so, so imperfect. And he was sad because it wasn't perfect before the Lord. And God told him, if you do well, will you not be accepted? Somebody said that when he was going to all that work and effort and trouble, 
there was probably a lamb right there stuck in the brush with him, just like it was with Abraham. I'm telling you, God has provided it. God does it right. God cares. God loves. But you and I must be willing to love. You and I must be willing to forgive. You and I must be willing to let God give us a hungry heart. Amen. For God to make whatever changes in us that he sees need to be made. Yes. Not what we see. We're comparing ourselves so often among ourselves. And the Bible says that's not wise. That's not wisdom. Amen. As long as we compare ourselves among ourselves, we're foolish. Right. Amen. But the soul, the mind, the will and the emotion. Where are your mind, will, and emotions in God today? What does your mind think when somebody cuts you off? Where does your mind go very quickly? Whenever somebody does something and looks mean at you or, or uh, you feel like they're against you or they seek to embarrass you or whatever the predicament is, what do you feel? What do you what do you weigh that situation and scenario as? If you're weighing it with the soul, you're weighing it with what you can see and what you can understand. And you really don't understand very much at that time. We need to get the discernment of the Holy Ghost and look deeper and farther. That that woman that was talking to Jesus at the well, and he told her. Amen, that she had had five husbands and she said, I perceive that you're a prophet and everything. And, and uh, he began to talk to her. And at first she was probably arrogant. And why are you, amen, even talking to me, a woman of Samaria? Amen. Why are you dealing with me the way you are? Just because you got a need and your people's not around, you're going to be two-faced. Only God knows what the devil was putting through her mind. She was probably wounded and hurt and had been offended time after time after time. But Jesus told her, if you knew who it was that talked with you, you would ask of him. And he'd give you eternal life. And after just a little bit, she said, Lord, give me this, this water that, that I drink and never thirst again. She's still in the natural. But she's heading in the right direction. And she's warming up to the Lord instead of keeping Him at bay and keeping Him a long way off. If you and I will realize God loves you, God doesn't want to just embarrass you or, or just, just point out your faults. God wants to help you to be what you desire to be as a Christian and even greater. Even greater. God wants to use you to be a soul hunter. And you know, I believe God wants to use you to be a soul hunter to your loved ones, to your friends, to your acquaintances. Amen. God help us to be sensitive. Don't be scared off by the perilous times. The perilous times means reducing the strength that I shared with you earlier, I think. Difficult and dangerous times. By implication, it's talking about Fierce. Yeah. Yes. Remember, if the hose dull and you're chopping, you got to put two more strength. Uh -huh. so, yeah. yes. yeah. Or you can sharpen the hose. Yes. You start the chainsaw. Yes. Or you can just keep working. Yeah. That's about the comparison. <laughs> we need to know what the Spirit is wanting to do in our heart and in our life today. Whenever Jesus was there and his disciples, James and John, was with him, and uh, uh, they began to share with him how they didn't want him, they didn't accept him in Jerusalem in Luke chapter 9, and he sent messengers before his face, and, and when they went out of that village, they did not receive him. And when James and John saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? And Jesus turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. All right. That's right. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. 
I want you to know whenever we're trying to address people with the good news of the gospel, are we just wanting to address those that have not crossed us seven times? Seven times, seven times? Or are we willing to even try to let God somehow give us a love Amen. for those that have crossed us 70 times yes. seven. That's right. in one time, in one day? The soul, the soul is the part of man that feels. Amen. Most of your feelings down here, I thought this week, this week, I was someplace in the thought went through my mind, this is a mighty, mighty unfulfilling season in my life. I want you to know I've not run off with the secretary. You say, Pastor, that's easy. You don't have a secretary. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't run off with a secretary anyway. I don't have the strength to run. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? I'm saying God's in control. God's in control. I'm going to doctors that seems like they don't care. Amen. They want to lay the law down to me about this, that, or the other. I'm telling you, I need the physician. Yielded heart. 
a sacrifice that loved God regardless of how the people that they needed love from treated them. Amen. God wants you to not look at them. God wants me to not look at them when I'm in that position and the preaching comes across in a way that it seems like there's no love coming across from the pulpit. You need to realize greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. And it's not that I've laid down my life, but it's the Lord laid down his life for you that you might have life. And that more abundantly. He loves us. He cares for us. And I want you to know that saying says if you were the only one that was on the cross, he would have died for you. All right. Amen. We can't just think things through until we convince ourselves. But our spirit must allow God to be whatever God wants us to be in him. Our spirit must trust God. 2 Corinthians 3 and 5 says not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as we are, as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Hey, I didn't even think about that when I was trying to minister and get something together for you. I'm telling you, glory to God, at times I felt like Cain was trying to prepare a good sacrifice to offer the Lord. And God had already offered the sacrifice. And he said, why don't you look at Abel and instead of hating him? Why don't you find love in your heart toward him? Why don't you let me, amen, do what I've already done and made available to you? You say, Pastor, did you really think all that? No, but I could have. God loves you, church. I don't know what's going to be required of us tomorrow. Philippians 2 and 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. We're living in the midst of a carnal world. A world that wants no sacrifice, no pain, no death, no cross. I'm talking about a church world. A church world. Wants God just to accept what I give and be happy that I'm giving it to Him. Because I've got other options, you know. Oh, God, be merciful to us. In your wrath, God, remember mercy. Romans 6 6 says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, yes. knowing that Christ being raised from the dead doth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. Aren't you looking for the day yes. when death hath no more dominion over him? Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead doth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Let me ask you something, church. Can you remember how it felt when you were so overtaken by love when God first saved you? I'm telling you, you love everybody. There were no exceptions. It was everybody. You wanted, if you could have somehow grabbed them and hugged them and wrapped them up in the love of God, you would have done it. If you could have done anything to minister to them and to get them to allow God to do what he just did for you. Romans 6 and 13 says, Neither give you members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of, a, of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. The law is so much more than the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. 
honor your father and your mother. God is more than that. God wants to bathe you in his love. God wants to fill you, body, soul, and spirit with something supernatural. Amen. To where when you encounter people, whether it's at the gas station or the red light or the grocery store or the workplace or wherever, they can tell there's a glow. There's something different. And they want that difference. They want that difference. God, give me that difference. God's make that change in me. Again. Oh, but the scars, the pain, the mistakes, the rejections, the on and on, it don't matter. It don't matter. She had had five husbands and she was shacking up in the state she was in right then. Yeah. But Jesus took time. Yes. He didn't just take time. He must needs yeah. go through Samaria. He must needs go through Samaria. Praise the Lord. Your soul. Church, if you're really wanting your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, if you're really wanting your soul to be supernaturally changed, begin to bow down to God in prayer and ask God to get a hold of your spirit. God, help my spirit. Help me to forgive God those that have wronged me. God, help me to forgive myself. God, help me to forgive others. God, do whatever you want. Change me. Change my body, my, my appetites, my desires. Let me not have such a craving for him. Right. I'm talking about me now, not you. God knows where we're at, church. I've got a family member, my cousin. I've got one living uncle on my real dad's side that's still alive, Roger. And I hadn't heard from him in two and a half months probably. And the last week, maybe since we've been back from uh, the graduation, he called and him and his wife have been just deathly sick. She's been in the hospital and he's been going through COVID or something. And Several times I've thought about calling him. But Brother Jerry, you know the reason I didn't call him? Because I didn't really feel like he really wanted to talk to me. Because it seems like every time I call him, I'm just telling him, Roger, get in church. Roger, don't wait too late. Roger, 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 you were raised different than that. I'm telling you, he called me. And he said, don't ever be bothered by that. He said, I need to hear it. He said it's truth. Yes. And the word of God tells us to buy the truth and sell it not. Amen. Amen. I want you to know you may not always feel like with your mind, will, and emotions surrendering to God. But when you're laying in bed at night and you're talking to God, say, God, change me. Yes. Cleanse me. Yes. God, do whatever you want to do in me. And you just continue to present you to the Lord. God will work His work in you for His glory. If you will trust Him and surrender. Amen. Amen. Would you stand this morning? Are you here today? And you have been willing to... Say, Pastor, I'd be willing for God to show me this week what I would feel like next week if I put off surrendering to God this week and the Lord came this coming week. How would I feel? How would I feel? been a few times in my life that the Lord has really dealt with me. Amen. And it's like I was made aware of shortcomings and made aware of family and loved ones' needs and made aware that 
I could have made a difference. But I didn't. I didn't. It's not pleasurable. It's not comfortable. I want to know our granddaughters. We better take the gospel to them. We better take the love of Jesus to them. No matter how much scripture somebody can quote, if they're not surrendered to the Lord, they're not serving. They're just saying, Lord, Lord. God says, not every man that says, Lord, Lord's going. Mm -hmm. right. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Father, you see people that are here today. And God, I pray that any heart that is not yielded and surrendered to you, God, let them do it today. Let them come down with these that come down to pray, Lord, and let them submit their heart, their mind, their will, and their emotions to you. Saying, God, you do whatever you want to do, but let your will be accomplished in me. I watched a video, very short, and man, I didn't recall the video, but anyway, I watched it. It was illustrations, and it was a man that was telling about this mother had such a burden and a desire for her daughter to be right with God and and that daughter was going to do it but she wanted to go out one last time with the, with the youth and party and everything and her daughter just in a moment of foolishness and arrogance her mother went out to the car with her and said please don't go please don't go and she said the Lord ride with you and that girl had got so embarrassed by her mother coming out to the car with her, she said, if he rides in this car, he'll have to ride in the trunk because we're full. Mm -hmm. And about four hours later, the car was demolished to the point to where you couldn't even tell it what kind of car it was. <laughs> the amazing thing was that the patrolman said he had never seen such a wreck like that. And they opened up the trunk and there was a dozen of eggs in the trunk. And not one of the eggs was even cracked. Ooh, hallelujah. God was making a statement to somebody. And I'm telling you, God sees the foolishness of our loved one's lives. Amen. And you and I need to pray now. Amen. Not all of our family is where <laughs> Davy and Natalie are at. Right. But they're trying to do it their way. Let's come and let's surrender to the Lord and just tell him we love him and mean it with all of our heart and let him do whatever he wants to do in us today. Amen. Let's find a place to pray if you will.